Got it. All right, so in Psalms 119, let's look here in verse 133. Order my steps in thy word. In thy word. All right, let's take a, what would that look like? Well, let's, let's take a little lesson from Job. He went through a thing or two. Uh, and he didn't exactly have a hayride here, did he? And uh, look in the book of Job chapter 37. Job uh, chapter 37 and verse 19 Teach us what we shall say unto him, for we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness. Now, what I'm doing is showing you etymology. Uh, that word uh, there is direct, establish, or prepare. Uh, we could read the verse this way. Teach us what we shall say unto him, for we cannot establish, prepare, or direct our speech by reason of darkness. Shall it be told him that I speak? If a man speaks, surely he shall be swallowed up. And now men see not the bright light which is in the clouds, but the wind passeth and cleanseth them. Um, uh, so Job, uh, Elihu, uh, is telling Job the storm depicts God's greatness. Uh, comparing that storm to what is going on in Job's life. So that's where that is centered at. Uh, look, if you will, in um, the, the book of uh, Job still, chapter 33. Job chapter 33. And in verse 5, If thou canst answer me, set thy words in order before me. Take thy stand. Behold, I am, a, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. I also am formed out of the clay. Uh, this is Elihu again. Uh, he's acting as God's spokesman uh, concerning God's righteousness. Um, this idea of order. Uh, we have the same idea in New Testament terms in the book of 1 Corinthians. Uh, that God is not the author of confusion but of order, um, things put in place. It can have that idea with it as well. Uh, let's look in Psalms now, chapter 37. Psalms 37, and in verse 23. Psalms 37, 23. Um, I'm going to read a bit ahead and we have a contrast here that I want to pick up. So look in Psalms 37 and in verse uh, 23, back up to verse 20. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be like the fat of lambs. They shall consume, into smoke shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as are blessed by him shall inherit the earth, and they who are cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Uh, the steps of a righteous man or a good man are ordered of the Lord. Um, let's look in 33, 5 now of Psalms. Psalms chapter 33. Hmm. It might not be what I was looking for, but let's back up here just a little bit in verse 4. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. 
Um, verse 11. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Uh, this ordering the steps. Um, and the plea along with that is to not let sin have dominion. Let not in iniquity have dominion. Um, let's look in the book of um, Romans for a minute. Let's, let's, let's go back to the book of Romans. And I want to give a good definition of what iniquity is before I look at chapter 6. You move on over there to chapter 6, and I'll be with you in just a minute. Um, there's 6, okay. Uh, this idea, there's um, different words to define sin. And one of those words is iniquity. And uh, that, that idea of iniquity brings with it uh, it's, it's the act of uh, violating or, uh, or coming short of God's uh, revealed will um, and it has to do uh, really with uh, sinning even though it's an inherent wrong whether expressly forbidden or not. It's inherent wrong, whether expressly forbidden or not. Uh, you know it's wrong. <laughs> you know it's wrong to begin with, okay? Uh, look in the book of Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Um, we have been co-death, co-burial, co-resurrection and immersed into Christ. And as so, we are so because uh, we have power over death. We have power over sin in our lives. Um, uh, we can render the body dead to sin. Co-burial. Co-resurrection. Uh, we live by his resurrected, empowered life. The walk in newness of life. Then we're told in verse 11 through 13, this is where Paul meets Roy in Rome. <laughs> you remember that? Reckon, obey, and yield. Reckon, obey, and yield. Now verse 14. For sin shall not have to dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Now, you've got to understand the flow of Romans here. We've just dealt with imputed righteousness and justification. And up against that, we have the imputed sin act. That's Adam's disobedient act from him directly to us. All right, that's, that's what chapter 5 takes care of. Chapter 6 is the inherent sin. In other words, the, the, the sin from Adam down through our fathers. The sin nature that's passed down. Romans also addresses lascivious living. Shall we sin that grace may abound? Well, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer in it? And there was the accusation that grace, gospel that Paul was preaching, gives a license to sin. Well, then you don't understand grace. All right, now, we're, we're, those are the, that's the atmosphere or environment of this context. That's why you have this said. For you're not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Now, sin shall not have dominion over you. That's the whole point of being co-death, co-burial, co-resurrection in Christ. To be free from sin 
and to be free from the law. To, and verse 6 says that we henceforth we should not serve sin. Uh, and in verse 10, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Uh, that uh, death no more hath dominion over them, verse 9. So death and sin and the law, for sin shall not have dominion over you, verse 14, for you are not under the law but under grace. All right, now, verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that whereas ye were the servants of sin, ye have obeyed from that, from the heart that mold of instruction which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For, ye, for if... For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness and holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things which ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. And that's where that verse comes from. For the wages of sin is death. Um, I, I, I won't say I, I, I'm against using that verse maybe in gospel tracts, but I don't like it because it's out of context. That's really written to believers. But notice, but now being made free from sin and become the servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. All right. Um, this is the prayer that we see here. Order my steps in thy word. That word is very simple. Reveal truth. And let not iniquity have dominion over me. That which I know is not right. That which is inherently wrong. I don't let that creep in and have dominion over me. Uh, the two go together. And if we are walking in the steps as ordered by the Lord, um, and, and, we're, and we're keeping His Word, which is the point of this, this, uh, this section of verses, then sin will not have dominion, or iniquity will not have dominion over us. Uh, Thy Word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against Thee. There is the power of the word. It's a sharp scalp or malleon uh, that is able to surgically cut to the marrow and the bone and the soul. Uh, and so uh, the word of God is that enablement, if you will, the power of the word. Um, and uh, that's that prayer along with it. Okay, let's look in Psalms 19. The book of Psalms. Okay, let me get the clock in my view. <laughs> All right, look in the book of Psalms. Well, the clock's in my view, but it's backwards. So <laughs> it's hard. It's. It's backwards. It's hard for me to, to read it. Uh, it looks like I got 20 after 6. 20 till 6. Well, it's backwards. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now look in Psalms 19, verse 7. <laughs> look in Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. 
that ordinances, judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. In keeping of them, there's great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. So we see in this passage concerning the works in the Word of God, uh, that same prayer. Let them not have dominion over me, and I will be upright. Uh, be like Job, he was upright and sincere. Okay, um, let's move now to the next verse, if you will. What is this all about? Well, it's about keeping the word. Uh, these are the things that's going to have to go on here. <laughs> Uh, order my steps and let not iniquity, what I know is inherently wrong, have dominion over me. All right, deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. So will I keep thy precepts. Now, we, dealt, we, we kind of delved into this pretty heavy when we were looking at the oppressor in the previous section. Remember that? Uh, if you go back there for just a second, 121, leave me not to mine oppressors. Don't leave me in the hands of my enemies. Oh, please don't do that. Uh, <laughs> um, and the oppressors are here are those that are described as arrogant. Um, if you notice in verse 22, let not the proud, oppress me uh, that uh, that arrogance uh, and God hates pride and pride is sin uh, and lastly uh, if you'll notice let's see kind of lost my place here I apologize uh, notice in verse 26 uh, for they have made void thy law that's how they go about things they say and they put into practice things that are uh, obviously contrary and works against the law of God. Okay, that's the oppressor. We spent time on him. So will I keep thy pre precepts, and we did spend much time on that when we opened up this section. Just a couple of passages, though. Look in the book of Luke, chapter 1. The book of Luke. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. This is one of these Benedictus. This is by Zacharias, the, the father of John the Baptist. And notice, if you want, verse, concerning the birth of Christ. Notice in verse 67. And his, his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed these people, and hath raised up an horn, or a strength of deliverance, for us in the house of his servant David, that kingly line, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the ages began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies. That's our word deliver there. Delivered out of the hands of our enemies. 
might serve Him without fear in righteousness and in holiness and righteousness before Him all the days of our life. Now that's one long sentence, isn't it? <laughs> uh, that's that's quite. It's like reading uh, um, Ephesians one one through fourteen. I think that's about three sentences. <gasps> Now that's one long sentence, and what's it about? God is, has sent Jesus Christ to redeem and deliver. Um, to, to bring out of danger or destruction or eternal um, punishment. Um, look in Psalms 118, if you will. Uh, this had leaving in mind, did it? Sir? Oh, yeah, no, really, that is, a, if you delve into that, he is uh, looking at Jesus Christ as the Messiah King in his kingdom role. So he, he, that's not all about the present, because obviously they were under oppression under Rome. And uh, Titus, 78, he comes and tears down Jerusalem. But this redemption and deliverance wasn't at the moment. It was for later um, but notice in Psalms 118 we, we studied about the deliverer the redeemer I think in our last communion out of the book of Isaiah 59 uh, and let's look in Psalms 118 the psalm before Psalms 118 and uh, let's look if you will in verse Let's start in verse 1, because when we're talking about this kind of deliverance, it isn't just physical. 18.1, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. The house of Aaron now say his mercy endureth forever. Let them now who fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. The Lord taketh my part with those who help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon those who hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations compassed me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. Uh, they compassed me about, yea, they compassed me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They compassed me about like bees. They are quenched like the fire of thorns, for in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Thou hast thrust hard at me, but that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song. He's become my salvation. Uh, that's the idea here of deliver me. Uh, deliver me from the oppression of man. What is man? That thou art mindful of him. Okay, this all surrounds this idea of keeping the word. These are the keys uh, of doing so. This is the prayer uh, that needs to be submitted. These are the issues of having our steps ordered in the word. To look thou upon me with mercy, loving the Lord. Delivering me from the oppression of man, I'll keep thy precepts. I make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Teach me thy statutes. Um, this gives you the impression that it is an ongoing, um, ongoing um, situation. And what this calls for, really, is God's divine favor. God's divine favor. Uh, remember Hebrews, Hebrew language is phraseology. Uh, you get the meaning from within the phrase. Uh, it could be a phrase of description. Uh, it could be a phrase uh, that would bring out a word picture or a metaphor. But it's phraseology. And here, this idea of make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Uh, many times in this psalm, the writer claims or presents himself as God's servant. 
Uh, and what is uh, required of a servant? That what? What's required of a servant? That's right, Millie. It's required of a servant that he be found faithful. You said. Okay, obedience. You both hit it. You hit it dead on. Uh, that's what the servant has to be. He has to be obedient. What is said gets done. Uh, he has to be uh, reliable. Reliable. All right. Um, it says, make thy face to shine upon thee. That's divine favor. That's what that pictures, the face of the Lord. Now, that, can, that one has a, a double meaning. Um, if you're against God, you don't want that face. You're on the wrong side of that. That's not good. Kind of like the Egyptians. That's the last thing they saw. And you might say things didn't go well. I uh, hope they learned how to swim. <laughs> it, just, it just didn't go well, did it? Uh, but, that, but this phraseology, the idea of thy face to shine upon someone, that calls for divine favor. New Testament, find grace. Find grace with God. Find grace with men. Finding the grace of God. Finding favor with God. Okay, let's, uh, let's go see what that looks like. Let's get some examples. First of all, look in Psalms 4, 6. It's right nearby here. Psalms chapter 4. Look at verse 3. But know that the Lord hath set apart him who is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still, Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up thou the light of thy countenance upon us. That's a good, that's a good idea. That's a good idea of this. Um, lift up, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Um, thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their grain and their wine increase. I will both lie down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Um, let's look in 31, 16 of Psalms. Psalms 31, 16. Psalms 31, 15. Now this psalm is written by David. I believe he's being chased around by Saul from cave to cave in the wilderness everywhere. Uh, and uh, this is a psalm about safety, just committing oneself unto the Lord. The protection of God. And in verse 14, but I trusted in the, well, let's back up and get the, uh, get the, um, the, the drift of it. Look in verse 12. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I'm like a broken vessel. For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from those who persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed and let be silent in shield. Let the lying lips be put to silence. 
which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for those who fear thee, which thou hast wrought for those who trust in thee before the sons of men. Uh, that having God's favor, having God's favor. Let's look in Psalms 80. Psalms chapter 80. Restoration. I put down the whole thing. My goodness. Restore us, O God, and cause... There it is. Restore us, O God, and cause thy face, thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Verse 4 of Psalms 80. O Lord God of hosts, how long wilt thou be angry against the prayer of thy people? Thou feedest them with the bread of tears, and givest them tears to drink in great measure. Thou makest us a strife under our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Uh, this is Asaph, by the way, Psalm of Asaph, concerning Israel and their restoration and their, uh, their, their movement back to the land. Restore us, O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the nations and planted it. Uh, again, this is, these are word pictures, what God did. Yes, sir. What's that mean? Uh-oh. I'm in trouble with time. What's new? <laughs> if you will. Thou preparest room before it. Thou didst cause it to take deep root and fill the land. And we see that the hedge is broken down. And look in verse 14. The wild beasts of the field come and devour it. That's a picture of the, of the nations coming in. Return we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. Uh, what's he saying? Well, look at the end, verse 19. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine. We shall be saved. Uh, you all know the ironic breath blessing. Let the Lord keep you and preserve you. Let the Lord's face shine upon you and find favor uh, upon you. Uh, that's that's the same idea. Daniel, we've been studying Daniel. Uh, let's look in the book of Daniel. Uh, this is a great secret for God's people to find favor with God. Now we studied this verse for verse, so I'm just going to get right to it, to verse 17. Now therefore, O our God, hear of the prayer of thy servant and his su supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. He's talking about Jerusalem that had been burned down. If you would just give us favor for that sanctuary, Jerusalem. All right. All right. Well, I got the uh, high sign, so I'm, uh, I'm hooked here but um, these are um, these are the things that the psalmist prays for in reference to the keeping of God's word okay all right let's let's end with a word of prayer our gracious God and heavenly father we thank you for this prayer meeting tonight and the prayers that were offered and the thanksgivings and the concern and love for one another. Father, we do pray for Jeannie tonight in a special way. Give her strength and grace and blessing uh, to, to work through this physical therapy, uh, to regain uh, strength and to rehab so that she can go home and move about and do her business. Father, we know it's painful, that it's exhausting. We just pray your power upon her. We pray for our missionaries, the Marshes, the Bronx, uh, our own guys, uh, Heritage Bible Church and Missions, uh, the, the work at Temuco Bible Institute. Uh, we think also of 
uh, the Perrys there in Antofagasta. Uh, Father, we just pray that you would bless them, that your face would shine upon them. Uh, Father, that their steps would be ordered uh, of the Lord in thy word. Uh, that, Father, they would uh, be those who'd be willing to be taught uh, in your statutes. And, Father, we, uh, we just pray that you would deliver them from the oppressive man. Uh, Father, that, uh, that you would look upon them. And, Father, we just pray that you would bless us as we leave here tonight. May we be challenged in the keeping of thy word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.